many people think. All right, joining us now, social media expert Chris Desi. All right, the downfall of this, if you were planning to misuse it, is that someone gets the Snapchat and goes and can take a screenshot of it before it goes shot, and that's it. And it's unfortunate because the application is cool. Mm -hmm. It's fun. I use it with my two kids and with cousins, and we send silly pictures. But there's this false sense of security. You get lulled into this false sense of security, and you say, hey, listen, if I take a potentially promiscuous photograph, well, it's going to be gone forever. Wrong. Wrong. Do you think kids really even think that? Are we, are, are we giving them a, not enough credit? They know how this stuff works, right? They know I mean, exactly how it works, yeah. but, you know, they don't realize that it's going to be, you know, I, I tell people when you're dealing with anything online, literally anything yeah. online, applications, email, anything in social media, anything on in the internet, period, the assumption should be that it will be out there in perpetuity, right? right? But they're kids. They're not thinking about that, and frankly, there are a lot of adults that get themselves into trouble with these applications and with sure. social media as well. And right. I've been here talking about it. Yeah, exactly. exactly. I mean, technology keeps having these new apps coming up and they make these promises like, oh, it's going to be self-destructing or you can delete them forever. But technologically speaking, that's really impossible, right? It's impossible. It's got to go somewhere. It goes into the cloud. They're storing it in databases. That's, so, that's the way that these things function. And until they think of something that's going to completely self-destruct right now, Way, the manner in which you should conduct yourself is to make the assumption that it will be there forever. Now, I'm, try, you know, I'm trying to even <laughs> figure out this, this amnesty deal that the, the cops and the school have worked right. up together. They're basically saying, you know, you've got until Monday to erase your copy of it. Right. Which, I mean, it's a good idea, but it's falling, isn't happen. it? It's I mean, never going to happen. Because what happened, these kids, too, so they took the screenshot of the naked picture and then they posted it on Instagram. Yeah. It's a million different places. By and now. Like, when you think about it, you hear about the story, you're like, oh, that's so horrible. They're going to do that. They're kids. Sure, they don't right. understand the repercussions of it. And everything that's happening within social media amplifies what's happening in the real world, right? Sure. This is just, you know, silliness and crazy kid behavior amplified. And now all of a sudden it gains national attention. They don't have that realization. And frankly, as adults, we don't have it either because this is new. These types of technologies are new. So we're just kind of getting our feet wet. We're just kind of figuring it out. And hopefully, as time goes on, we'll have a better understanding. We'll be able to slow down and think before we start engaging in these applications and posting potentially incriminating photographs. That's really good advice. You know, as a parent, Chris, parents who have kids who use apps like these and these photos apparently self-destruct, how do you go back into your child's phone and see if they are sending inappropriate photos? You know, what do you do? So I've heard some great advice with parent advocacy groups, and they talk about um, allowing kids to have their phones for a certain time of day, but then giving kids a sort of end-of-day curfew with the phone and saying, listen, we're going to put it in a charging station. I'm going to own the password because I'm a parent. I'm paying the bills. Right. That's the way right. it goes in this house. And you, can, you can check the history of the, of the photographs and any of the content and the activity within the phone. You charge it overnight. Maybe you stop the usage at 4 o'clock p.m. before dinner so you can have a nice dinner together. But you know, being able to be uh, involved in what your children are doing within these applications, I think, is paramount, right? Right. I mean, you, you, we are seeing parents use the leverage of the fact that they're probably paying for these things more and more. Like, okay, you've got the phone, right. but I've got the password. We did a story last night about that. That's probably your best bet. Absolutely your best bet. I mean, listen, my kids, my oldest is going to be five in April, my youngest is two. The two-year-old, you can see her on my iPhone, yeah. flipping around. They That's know correct. how to navigate right. these things, so you need to be attentive to but it. they're like ten steps ahead of us. There are apps out there that look like a calculator <laughs> icon on the phone, and then you click on it with a password, and then all these secret videos or, you know, photos yeah. can show yeah. Educate yourself, right? Right. Because if you, you can't sit past it's beyond the technology, device, you just have to you tell have your to kids, exactly. don't do this. You, you know, need to be aware. Right. You need to be hyper vigilant. You need to be reading these things. You need to be going online and reading about these stories and get a little bit more of an in depth view about the stories. What's going on there? Why is this happening? And then taking control of it within your home. Right, Chris, we appreciate it. Silverback Social Media. Silverback Social.